A couple of people have thought that the best way to shut me up is to I should go and make my own Which I kind of address this issue in the intro But I should have known better This is the internet we are here to judge Let me see if I can make a much better scenario Than this crap we got here The convoy scene Let's have the couple's car Where it's supposed to be In the middle of the freaking convoy Instead of having the car magically disappear, I just have to leave the bride discovering the underwear in her husband's pocket. Because if I'm going to scrap that, I will have to scrap a big portion of this movie. Let's have her tell the driver to park the car. And the whole convoy notice this and decide to stop. Everybody comes down from their car and surrounds the couple's vehicle. Knocking on the windows but nobody want to wind down. Inside the car, Dozier is still trying to explain the situation to his wife. And outside, we can have all manner of commotion going on. Instead of having the bride's mother totally dense that she wants to kill herself, have her trying to break into the car in the most funniest way you can think of. From her suddenly getting her hands on a hammer from nowhere, to her holding a mortar. As her people are trying to hold her, they show all of this from inside the car as Dozier is begging. And if they really wanted to go crazy, the whole commotion would have stopped because somebody was set on fire and all of them trying to put it out. As they put the fire out, the couple suddenly wind down their windows. Then everybody can start asking what happened. This is not me trying to save this movie. This is me thinking of a more reasonable scene than what we got. Anyway, going back to business, I am totally going to skip the whole dance routine because that's just a waste of time. Although I did find Dozier's mother dancing completely out of place. The fact that her character is claiming to be totally white, high-class society woman, but now she's totally evil from what I can see. It's like two different characters. Then we move over to the scene of the wedding planner locking a door, and the guy who is not supposed to be in this party is scoping out the key. I was thinking a hotel like this would have key cards instead of just normal lock and key. But again, that might just be me neat speaking. Then we get a scene of Dozier's ex-girlfriend and her bitches walking to the reception like it's a rap battle. This is stupid. Not the scene, but the idea. Somebody did not only get Dozier's ex-girlfriend an invitation card, got invitation cards for her friends too. First and foremost, we both know that it's not Dozier that gave her. He ain't that stupid. And it's not his mother because his mother and father were surprised to see her when she introduced herself to us. Look, this is an event by invitation, right? So when they were creating the names of the people that will attend this occasion, they must have run it through the groom and the bride, right? So you are going to tell me both of them did not see his ex-girlfriend's name on that list. Or three of her bitches. And they all accepted it? Really? Okay, let's pause for a minute. Ladies, so you're going to tell me that the guy you want to marry, you see him putting his ex-girlfriend's name among the people that must attend his wedding and you didn't ask any question. You're totally cool with that. And to the guys, think about it. The woman you want to marry, you see her putting her ex-boyfriend and three of his friends as people that must attend a wedding and you are totally okay with it you don't say anything wrong with it huh even if you are going to use the excuse she used the invitation of her cousin that is in the hospital that still doesn't explain how she got her three bitches in and please at any point please let nobody say well it's just a nigerian film because that excuse don't work anymore we talk shit about america india and chinese movies but when it comes to Nigerian movies, it gets a free pass saying it's Nigerian movies. Well, that's just us being glorified hypocrites. And I am not one. Then we get the scene of Vanilla hitting on Dozier's brother. And he just simply walked away. Wait. Did this boy just pass off a blonde, blue-eyed, extremely very Caucasian woman? Okay. Anyway, back to more dancing. And oh my god. The extra bridesmaids are back. Oh, I missed you guys. Then we go to a scene of the ex-girlfriend and her bitches. And I was seriously upset. Ex-girlfriend and her so-called friends had more lines than the extra bridesmaids. Moving on to more dancing, the ex-girlfriend and her friends decide to harass the bride in front of everyone. And guess what? Nobody noticed it. Dozier was talking with his mother doesn't get a free pass from me but that's not the problem clearly this scene right here shows that the people who wrote and directed this movie know nothing on weddings where have you ever seen the bridesmaids picking up money where it is not possible not even in a hundred years that they excuse her 
friends, her bridesmaids did not see all this going on because they were packing money from the ground. This cannot even be an argument. If you like, go to a wedding that you know they did not pay up to 200,000 for that wedding, you will never see this shit. Her friends obviously came from a rich family and you're telling me they are the ones packing money. They did not hire people to do that job, right? Moving over to the scene of the white girl ordering what she wants to eat. Her saying, I love my swallow, sounded like porn to me, which confirms my speculation of some of the dialogue being written by someone that used to work on porn. That scene too has a problem, but I will get to it in a few minutes. A thief bump into the wedding planner so he can steal her key. Then we get a scene of people returning their food because they want to eat their Yoruba food, which is completely retarded. First and foremost, let's return back to the scene of the white girl Vanilla ordering, which shows to some point you order what you want to eat, right? But here it looks like you eat what they want you to eat. This one, I just have to say it. Guy in a lie. This is a rich wedding that they have repeatedly reminded us it has no buffet in 2016 this cannot work out in any dimension or reality and wait are the entire guests just yoruba people well somebody's losing her job the whole opening prayer was just an insult that i don't want to even remember it was in the movie i mean which dumbass goes to his church the prayer drags on for like three minutes three damn minutes it is longer than at least two dance routine of this movie then we get a scene of Dozier's father's girlfriend. Yeah, why not add her to the mix? There's no need for me to talk about her because she falls under the same category as Dozier's girlfriend, which I am not going to waste time to talk about again. I can't even imagine a conversation of a married man telling his son that is about to get married to put his girlfriend on the invited guest list. Even me saying it out loud is just retarded. Moving over to the time skip and the thief still doing his job. At this point in the movie, I had so much rage and frustration that I just had to let out. No emotional attachment to the couple, whom were ignored most of the movie. Why is the bride's family made to look so daft and stupid? One, they are rich. From what we can tell from the daughter, she must have spent more than four years in UK. Her accent is not something you get in four years of being in a university in UK. At least she must have done high school there. There is no way this woman that was panicking that her daughter is missing just because she has not arrived at her venue will let her only daughter go to UK alone. Which means she must have stayed with her in UK for some time. And somehow she still behaves this bush. Okay, look at Saka. He does not help the narrative of this movie. He is presented as the perfect bush Yoruba person. Please, can someone tell me the difference between him and the bride's parents? Nothing, okay? Nothing. Now we move over to the scene that the wedding planner was totally Nigeria. All I can say about that is, she's a good actress. Her British accent is very polished, much better than that annoying thing coming out of Yemi's mouth. She did a very good job on portraying a scared and weak woman that anybody can work on. Going back to another dance scene of the Yoruba family bringing ethnic people to dance for the Igbo people. This scene did not show on how daft the bride's parents are. No, it just showed on how they don't really care about their daughter. I mean seriously, they don't even know what their daughter is marrying into. Continuing part 4.